We are the silent majority. We are the ones that were forgotten. And we're silent no more. We're actually yelling now. The president is sick with the coronavirus. But the base that propelled him to office is still fired up for his re-election campaign. The MAGA crowd is unfazed by Trump's drop in the polls. And as he gets more and more criticism for his handling of the pandemic, their desire to show up for him only grows. So what brought you out here today? I've supported President Trump since 2016, and I just want to be out here to ride, show that, you know, us young kids, we stand for our freedom, for the flag, that we want America first. I've lost a lot of friends for my Trump support. Most 20-year-olds that I know of, I went to a liberal arts school, and they all kind of abandoned me when they found out I was conservative. Since I started doing these drags, doors have opened up. I now have a full-time job, thanks to one of these people, because I talked with them and told them I'm fresh out of college. People need to feel like they're not alone. They need to feel like there's other people that are with them and believe the same way that they do. And I feel like every time I put a flag on my car, I have an experience like that, where somebody comes up to me and says, thank you for doing that, I feel like I have a voice again. And that's, that's important. We're just pro-America. The other option is just so not pro-America. What do you see as the other option? Um, not America. <laughs> Let's ride! We got triggered left, you hear him? <laughs> What's up, brother? All right, we're rolling. We gotta roll. On this day alone, organizers say they had 285 car rallies across 45 states. God bless you, have a great day. So why do you think this has gotten so big? Uh, I think uh, because of the lockdown, I think people just need to do something. They need to feel like they're doing something and, and being on the computer is not good enough right now. Uh, we, we are fighting for our country and this is a way we can stand up and show people that, that we are united and not divided. For a socially distanced rally, participants weren't too worried when we asked about the virus or its highest profile patient, the president. How did you feel when you found out the president got COVID? Oh, well, he'll just be fine. I'm not worried about it. You're not worried. It. My husband's a trauma nurse. He sees COVID patients all the time. Um, the, the actual death rate is just astronomically low. So far this year, we have no excess deaths. And, uh, but that, that's not true, though. If you look we at have the a lot more excess deaths, deaths. If you look at the overall deaths in the country, they're, they're projected to be just the same as last year. Actually, according to the CDC, somewhere between 214,000 and 285,000 more Americans have died since February than would in a normal year. But skepticism towards the virus that's led to most of those deaths was almost as unifying a force here as Trump himself. It turns out to be about as deadly as the flu. It's killed 200,000 Americans. It hasn't killed 200,000 Americans. They've counted COVID deaths that didn't die of COVID. Do you think that Trump has been irresponsible in holding big rallies with thousands of people, some of them even indoors? I don't believe he's been irresponsible in his handling of the rallies. Um, you look at the pictures and a lot of people are wearing their masks like they've been told to do. Um, There's some social distancing guidelines that have been in place in certain states that they follow. I don't believe that anyone in government, whether that was a Republican or a Democratic president, would ever purposely do anything that put people at risk of death. I just, I don't want to believe that anybody in power would put anybody purposely at risk like that. Trump trails Joe Biden by around 10 points in national polling averages. But when asked about the widening gap in a recent interview, he pointed to events that his supporters hold like this. He added, they have a boat thing. So yesterday was all about MAGA by land and today by sea, or more accurately by lake, we're going to join a big pro-Trump boat parade. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer on this beautiful and glorious day. We are one nation under God, and we will put the body of armor on and protect this country for what it is. And Trump will be elected. We pray this. That is what this is all about. We have an option of 30 days. 
We support America or we give up our rights. Did Trump's diagnosis make you think of the pandemic any differently? No. No, I've, I've, uh, I've known lots of people that have gotten the COVID. I have an 81-year-old mother that lives with me. We have not done masks. We have not, you know, practiced social distancing. Why not? We don't assume that we're going to get COVID. If we did, we get it and we move on. You know, it's not, it's not a deadly disease. But 200,000 Americans have died from COVID. But those 200,000 people that have died from COVID, COVID is not the reason they died. Another disease that they already had was as exasperated. But they wouldn't have died if they hadn't have gotten the COVID. They wouldn't have died Correct, like, in this time. Correct, but it's because of another disease that they had. It's no different than saying, because I'm obese, obesity will kill me. But if I get the flu, They'll say the flu killed me, but it's not the flu, it's the obesity that killed me. How did you feel when you found out the president has COVID? I was heartbroken. I understand um, the mass situation. It, you know, it's one of those things because I think- well, What do you mean the mass situation? Well, that was the first thing, he, he doesn't wear a mask. I think that's his personal choice. I think it's his personal choice, and I still I still believe that. What about the people who he could have potentially exposed by not wearing a mask? Listen, if I sit down and I listen to 10 doctors, I hear 10 different things. Like today, I don't have a mask on, you guys do. I totally respect that right. Well, we don't have a mask on, so we don't make you sick if we're potentially asymptomatic. No, I, I understand, but my point is, well, I think it's really a personal choice at this point in time. If it's mandated, oh, absolutely. If I go to a grocery store, if I get into a public space, but on, on situations like this, I just, I just don't see the need in it. Our president has found a way, I think more than any other president, to have people come and unite and rally behind him the negativity that the media brings to him has united him, a lot of people behind him. So you think it's a reaction to the way he's portrayed? Correct, yes. There's a, there's a huge silent majority out there and that's what we represent.